Hi, Stuart Bruce here and I am the Spare Time Property Investor. In these podcasts, I'm going to share tips, tricks and lessons I've learned and will hopefully help you, especially if you're still working the nine to five. Hi and welcome to another episode of the Property Investor Podcast. Um, today it's an interview episode and I'm joined by Ollie Griffiths. He is an international uh, rugby player. He plays for the Newport Gwent of Dragons, uh, but has also appeared in the National Wales team. Um, so, you know, a real pro. Um, he obviously has a very different experience of juggling um, property around his day job as a professional rugby player. But I'm sure his really practical approach to property investment, a lot of people will be able to relate to it because he's really got stuck into property investment and it's working really well for him. But before we get into the interview, I'd like to say that I've started a free monthly newsletter. It has topical articles about what's happening now. It has regular updates on legislation change. My wife, Lara Betzina, does an interior design tip or hack every month, and it's all free. The physical form goes out to people in our target area, but if you want a copy, it's absolutely fine. Just head over to our blog, um, links in the show notes, um, get over there, have a look, and sign up to make sure you don't miss out on the next issue. But that's it from me for a minute. Let's get into the interview with Ollie Griffiths. Well, thank you so much, Charlie, for coming on to the podcast. Uh, so to start off with, let's talk a little bit about your career as a professional rugby player and how you managed to fit, fit property investment around that. Yeah, so I've been a professional rugby player um, for about six or seven years now. Um, signed my first professional contract when I was 19, uh, 25 now, so I've been doing it for about six or seven years. Um, I've had a bit, a bit of bad luck with injuries the last couple of years, which is sort of freed up a lot of time for me to get into property and educate myself. Um, it was around about three years ago, um, I first had, started a passion for property. Um, my first first house was a full renovation and sort of accidentally fell into um, flipping property. And oh, okay. I then went on to re- remortgage my first house, um, which gave me the the deposit for my first bike to let, which was just a st- standard um, three bed semi detached. Yeah. And, and since then, that sort of I sort of spurred me on to bigger and better things. Um, I then purchased my first HMO, which I'll talk about in in, in a bit. Yeah. But yeah, it's um, all the spare time I've got with the rugby. Sort of, um, I was a little bit worried about what I was going to do. Um, as good as the job it is, it's very much short lived. Yeah. Um, and the way, the way the sport is going lately, you're lucky to make make it into your your mid thirties, your early thirties. So I was always conscious about what I wanted to do after my uh, playing career and property, when I realised it could be a potential full-time job, that's when I started really spending some time on it, really. Okay. So that's, that's really interesting, especially, you know, using that, um, turning that injury into a positive as well, because I'm sure for a rugby player, if you're, uh, if you're injured, I mean, that's, that must be massive. That must be a massive thing for you to kind of try and cope with and, you know, getting your, your health and fitness back to a deep <clears throat> level so you can uh, compete. But also being um, kind of thinking ahead and what you're going to be doing in a few years time as and when like that career kind of changes and shifts and you have to go and do something else. Because that must be that must be a real um, issue for everybody who plays sports. You know, after a certain amount of time, you have to go and find something else to do. So it's really interesting that you've kind of really got that into your head and you're already following what you'll be doing. So yeah, exactly. It is, uh, it is tough with injuries and stuff, but yeah. I tried to flip it into a positive and kept myself busy. I'd done a bit of work experience a couple of years ago, just with a local estate agent. I've done some oh. property courses, um, just speaking to local investors and keeping busy and just trying to sort of educate myself alongside rugby as much as I can. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's great. Um, so normally when you're, when you're doing, when you're into your full training, um, you've got your games and stuff like that, what would that kind of week look like? Is that a very busy um, schedule or do you have rest time and things like that? Um, so typically we'll always have a Wednesday off. Um, we'll be in every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and Friday. And then depending on whether we're, we're home or away, um, potentially fly into Ireland, Scotland, um, South Africa once a year we go. Yeah, uh, a couple of French teams. So yeah, it's quite a hectic schedule when you are when you are playing. Um, very rarely do we get a week off. Um, end of the season we get a month complete complete rest. But apart from that, yeah, it's pretty pretty hectic. Um, unless you're injured, which unfortunately has been the case for me yeah. for the last um, couple of years on and off. 
so um so have you been fitting the property in because you've been injured or um if you were doing your normal um week or well your normal your normal schedule with your competitions and training and stuff like would you be able to fit in the property yeah we're, we're quite fortunate like you said we always get a wednesday off and um we usually finish by about three o'clock most okay. days so um I've got the afternoons and a day off throughout the week to sort of focus on that. Um, that's where I've been been fortunate, really. I've been managing a refurb at the moment. So being quite flexible um, and finishing quite early gives me the afternoons and a couple of days off a week to sort of stay on top of everything. Yeah, absolutely. So that's, that's, um, that's great, especially with the kind of slightly earlier finish. Um, it does allow you to have that time. Um, how, do you, how do you use that then? Do you make, um, do you kind of plan out what you'll be doing in the afternoons? Um, or do you, yeah, how, how do you work that? Um, I find it really helpful lately. Um, i sure you know yourself if, you're, if you've been involved in refurbs, there's a lot of moving parts, mm. um, especially with HMO, which I found has been a lot more maintenance um, than I anticipated. Yeah. Um, but just a little something I do to make sure I stay on top of everything I need to get done the next day. It's just a to-do list on my phone. I've right. got a weekly one and then a daily one. So I'm sort of just trying to take those off um, as soon as possible, really, because it's, it's easy to forget things. And then before you know it, it's had a knock on effect and you've got unhappy tenants or, you know, we go too behind on your refurb. Absolutely, yeah. That sounds good. Um, so going back to your rugby then, have you persuaded any other, other players to, um, to kind of get into property with you or do other players um, have this as a kind of um, another career kind of running in parallel to their rugby in preparation for them, you know, retiring and leaving the sport? There are a few boys. Um, one of my close mates, Elliot D, um, we're actually partners on the um, 10 unit HMO and flats in Newport together. So we uh, joint ventured up uh, to buy that together. Um, there are a few boys, yeah. A few of the younger boys are, are trying to learn a little bit. I've had a chat with a couple of them. Um, and I just tried to educate them as best as I could and make, make sure that they're not really jumping into anything. Um, as I'm sure you know, it's easy to make mistakes when you're first starting off. So, um, yeah, I've had a chat with a few of them. But there's a lot of boys that are, that are quite clued up on it and they're looking to set themselves up for after their playing career. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I think I, I, it must be it must be something that you have, because I, I suppose a lot of people um, when they have a, a job or a career, they're kind of thinking, you know, when you get into your 60s, kind of that's kind of when it all kind of starts to wrap up and stuff like that. But for someone like yourself, it's um, yeah, it's, it's probably a lot more kind of unpredictable and um, shorter as well. So, yeah, it's, it's supposed to be yeah, exactly. the mind. Yeah, exactly. I, I know I'm not going to be not going to be able to play rugby up until I'm 40 and 50. So yeah. it's about being smart um, in my early career now, um, earning sort of good money and just putting that to use. Yeah. So um, when I do finish, then I'm financially in a good place and they haven't squandered what's been a decent salary for 10 years or so. Yeah, that's great. Cool. Okay, then. So with that in mind, um, have you had any... Um, any um, projects going through um, during the Corona um, lockdown and you know the fallout from Corona? Um, we was we was going through the process of the um, it's an old police station it is in Newport so it's um, mm. it's a five bed HMO and then it's five self contained flats. Um, I purchased that with my partner Elliot who I play uh, play rugby with and known for all my life. Um, that was a that was a tough tough process. It took about ten months in total. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, the um, the owner wasn't wasn't very good with his paperwork or chasing up solicitors and whatnot. So we had problems with the solar panels. Um, the EPCs weren't up to date, so okay. the the lender so the lender was um, was putting things on hold until all was sorted out. But um, yeah, that, that probably went on extra three or four months due to due to COVID and everything being on hold. Um, but apart from that, uh, no other major problems. Um, purchased my uh, refurb I'm doing now just after COVID. Uh, slight delay uh, because it was a probate property. Mm -hmm. um, so just getting all that signed off, really. But apart from that, nothing major. Oh, that's good. That's really good. So, um, yeah, I, I think a lot of people, 
you're either <laughs> you got Sorry, that's the, that's <laughs> so a lot of people um have either been um you know kind of just about swerved it or been right in the thick of doing a refurb and they can't even get plaster or anything like that so it sounds like yeah. you've, you've swerved it a little bit yeah you. just about missed the uh the plaster drop <laughs> yeah absolutely so what uh, what originally sparked your interest in property investment um i think starting off one of my friends was um sort of learning a little bit the property podcast the second best podcast after yours of course i can't compete with those <laughs> I, I started i started listening to that and and realized they could be a viable option for me after after my rugby career to be honest and yeah. and since that um i think the ball has got rolling i got my first property and got the hmo uh, down in newport and i'm on my second flip now um so yeah, still early days, um, no expert by a long stretch, but um, I spent the last couple of years getting as educated as I can and then putting it into action, really. Um, meeting with a lot of local property investors just for a coffee. I found the yeah. um, property community very helpful. Um, whenever I ask someone, they're more than willing to help. So that's been, that's been really good for me starting out, really. No, I agree. I think um, a lot of people in property are very, you know, happy to share um, their experience, yeah. and they're very, yeah, very helpful, passing on contacts and stuff as well. I feel, yeah, yeah. They're, they're a good bunch generally. So yeah, it's great. When you um, when you first started, then did you uh, you were saying about um, training? Did you take any formal training, or is that kind of books and podcasts um, and stuff? I did do the white box property developers. Course. Oh yeah, um, <clears throat> they're from around here. So that was the white box. Yeah, yeah. I thought, I thought it was that way. Yeah. yeah. So we've done that a couple of years ago. Um, sort of learned a lot about the development side of things, and it's probably something I'll I'll move on on to in the future. There's a lot more to it than I sort of anticipated. It's probably a bit naive to think that I could jump in at the deep end. It's something I'd like to probably scale up to um, as my time and my knowledge. Um, well, as I, go, as I get more time and as I become more confident on bigger projects, but it did give me the confidence to <clears throat> to go ahead with the, the five bed uh, HMO and five flats down in Newport, which maybe had I not gone on that course, I probably wouldn't have had the confidence to get such a, pro such a big um, project so early on in my property investing career. No, it, looked, so it, was, it, was, it was worthwhile. Yeah, no, it looks, it looks like a good one. So the next question is what what's the favourite deal so far? And that sounds that sounds like a good one, is it? I mean, I'm not putting words in your mouth, but it sounds like a good one. Yeah. Um cash flow wise is probably the the old police station in Newport. Um yeah. the rent for that is about five thousand a month. Oh, but wow. the bills, uh tax, mortgage and stuff comes in at around about uh two and a half thousand. But oh, okay. that's a nice one in terms of cash flow, but I sort of um, didn't anticipate the maintenance of that. Okay. Um, there's been a few problems last last couple of months, but nothing major. Just a couple of hundred, hundred pound year in there, as you'd expect when you've got uh, ten, fifteen people living in living yeah, in a building. Yeah. Um, probably favourite project is the one I'm doing now. Um, it's literally two streets away from me, so it's a nice, easy one to manage. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm learning a lot about the refurb side of things. Um, I'm just excited to see the finish on it, really. We're fortunate we've got we've got some interest of people wanting to rent it already, hoping to get around about six fifty each month, which was slightly more than I had anticipated. But I think the market has changed the last few months. The the demand for rent, particularly in my area, speaking to a lot of the agents, is massive and sort of people queuing up. So that'd be a great one to get finished in the next few weeks or so. That's really good. So um, make make me jealous then. What sort of um, price are you getting properties for when you, when you're talking about that uh, sort of deal? So um, the the property in Newport, we um, the owner actually approached us um, to see if we would be interested in buying it. Um, he initially was going to put it up for auction, but he was interested in saving himself some auction fees. Uh -huh. Uh, we was obviously interested in purchasing it that way because we wouldn't have to front the cash in 28 days or bridge it or wherever. So we had a chance to get a mortgage. Um, so yeah, we bought that for 363, 75% uh, loan to value mortgage. Um, and the rent is around about 5,000, <clears throat> five and a half grand each month. So that was a great one. And the one I'm doing up now was uh, purchase price was 75,000, um, coming in at around about 22, 23,000 pound refurb. Yeah, yeah, and end valuation is going to be between 130 and 135. Right, yeah. So I'll be able to pull, pull all my money out um, for my next project then. 
Um, but yeah, we still we we had a lot of unforeseen work to be done um, down the property. But mm. I was lucky; I left enough contingency, so yeah, there's been yeah, no yeah. surprises yeah. really. Needed yeah. a damp proof course yeah. throughout. Um, it had lead mains, so all that needed to be changed. Oh, okay. um, yeah, yeah. And just a little little few things here and there um, that have up the refurb cost. But I was fortunate enough to to plan that when I done my figures. Yeah, still, there's, there's, there's plenty of margin there, isn't there? So, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you exactly. Have to, you have to, to, you know, yeah, a lot of people are sort of worrying about worrying about dipping the market, but I'm looking at it from the long term point of yeah. view. Yeah. Worst case, um, I, I get a down valuation, pull a bit less money out, but I've got a long term asset and Absolutely. a good cash flow each month. Absolutely, yeah, it's not going to sink you, it'll just slow you down, won't it? So, yeah, no, it sounds, yeah, sounds exactly. like two really, really good deals. So, that's great. So, um, so what, what would your tips be in terms of in, uh, investing around um, um, your kind of day job? I mean, I know you've been, um, you, you said about working in the afternoons and, uh, you know, with your injuries and stuff like that, but do you have any, any kind of tips that you would kind of share with people? I'm just being organised, really. Um, time is money and every time a refurb takes an extra month, it's a potential £600, £700 or wherever that you're out of pocket. So um, it helps having good trades as well. I'm fortunate yeah. enough, uh, a lot of people I've got working with me are quite quite helpful and um, quite reliable. So that's a big help. Um, but yeah, just stay organised really. Um, and just prioritise the most important jobs to get done. Like I said, I've got a daily to-do list and a weekly to-do list. If things need done urgently, I'll um, try to do them ASAP. Yeah, no, that sounds great. Cool. Have you got any um, kind of top business or property books that you'd recommend or you kind of read over and over again or anything like that? Um, Rich Dad Poor Dad, I'm sure every uh, property investor yeah, will say that one. Yeah, yeah. Um, the property podcast they found good. Um, it's quite a lot, to be honest. Your Property Network, um, yeah, yeah. YPN, I signed up there. I think it's a seven, seven pound a month rolling, rolling subscription for a magazine. I find that quite interesting. It's a lot of case studies. Um, you, in fact, I find a lot of pro the property books are quite repetitive. So once you've read the one, um, you've got the basics covered. Yeah. Quite like the look at case studies and um, other people's experience. Yeah, but um, Your Property Network is, is a great magazine. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. I think business books as well. A lot of business books and property books, they're kind of, they're kind of just slightly different angles on the same um, subject matter, really, aren't they? Just kind of, you know, go regurgitating the same information. But, yeah, exactly. And you can over, you can over educate yourself to some extent where um, you just read and read um, yeah. and never really put what you're learning into action. So I think taking action is the big thing as well. Definitely. I totally agree with you. I mean, there's, um, Oh, what analysis paralysis uh, i think that's uh, what they say on the on yeah the that's one, yeah yeah, yeah. So, yeah no you can, yeah. you can go round and round in circles and like with courses as well i think you can convince yourself you need oh i'll just have another course before i go and do that pro project or yeah. I'll read another book or whatever and yeah like yeah. it's about taking action I, i've learned more I've written more in the past, well, doing my own own house up uh, a couple of years ago, which was a full renovation about three or four years ago, and the one I'm doing now, I've learned more um, just being on site around the trades and stuff than I have in any book, really. So I think it comes a point where you just need to, need to jump into it and uh, crack on. Yeah, absolutely. So um, you were saying about the the, um, the to-do list, you've got on your phone, um, but do you use any other kind of tools or software or anything like that you couldn't uh, you know, live without? Um, there is an app I've got. I can't remember the name of it, but so that's not much out to many people. But it's sort of um, just breaks down all. It's like a spreadsheet, I suppose. If anyone's good with spreadsheets, it's a lot easier uh, to do it on your on your laptop. But uh, just the cash flow just works up the the taxes for me, um, the mortgage, and what I'm left over each month for cash flow. Uh -huh. I'm sure, there's spreadsheets out there and stuff, which is probably more more useful than that. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds good. I, yeah, I use um, I've got um, Google Google Sheets and Google Drive and do, Google Docs and everything like that on my phone. So I'm always I'm always. Yeah, I'm, I'm not very I'm not very good on the laptop. So um, I'm happy <laughs> with a little app on my phone now. Oh yeah, no, this is on my phone. I, I but you can use it across everything. So, oh, is it? Yeah, yeah. It's just oh, you can right. access it anywhere. So yeah, I'm always I'm always kind of yeah checking my spreadsheets and stuff out. Like so yeah, they're quite handy. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So this question. 
I, um, I normally ask because I'm convinced I've, I've probably had the worst jobs out of the people I speak to because I was a musician for a while. So I did lots of shitty little jobs, you know, just kind of temping places. Yeah. And stuff like that. But by the sounds of it, you've been a rugby player since you were 19, I think. <laughs> so I can't imagine. Yeah. Did, you, did you have the opportunity to have any terrible jobs before you got um, into rugby? Um, I did a bit of weight doing. Um, but apart from that, it's been rugby since I was about 19. Yeah, it sounds it. Um, it's a, it's yeah, amazing. I've been quite fortunate in that sense. That, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, I've been quite fortunate in the sense it, that I haven't... Sorry, we're, we're kind of <laughs> got a bit of a delay. Sorry, God, we've cut each other off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you go. You go. Um, yeah, was, I've been quite fortunate, really. I, I haven't had to do a job which I, which I dislike. Um, I've been doing rugby since I came straight out of college. So in that sense, I've been uh, quite fortunate, I suppose. That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I kind of win and lose, so that's, that's cool. Okay, so the last question then. Again, I think because you, you've gone straight into rugby, pretty much, I don't know if this is going to work for you, but if you could speak to your 18-year-old self, what advice would you give to them? Um, it's quite tricky, really. Um, I'd probably say just start earlier. Um, I missed out on a big opportunity of learning. My parents built their own house and um, I just didn't want to want anything to do with it really when I was that age. I didn't realise I was interested in property till I was about yeah. um, 20, 21 maybe. Um, so yeah, yeah. That, that could have been a good opportunity for me to learn about the, the building side of things. Um, but yeah, probably just, just educate myself earlier on. Um, every investor says it, the earlier you start, the better. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's about it really. Well, fair enough. And I think, like I said a couple of times, you know, I think it's, it's amazing you've kind of got into um, rugby uh, such a, I suppose you have to be in, in a sport like that at a young age or else you're kind of going to miss out on some of your best years, aren't you? But it's amazing you've been able to do it and you've built a great career yeah. from it. So, yeah, it's great. That's great. So, um, where, where can people... Yeah, exactly. Find you? I mean... Sorry, we've got a bit of a delay, haven't we? Uh, so we're on Instagram at... Yes, we have. So I'm on uh, Instagram at OG Properties and on Facebook at OG Properties. So cool. if you want to head over, I've got a um, refurb I'm doing now and we're slowly working our way through through the 10 rooms in the HMO down Newport. So we're, um, each time a tenant moves out, we're looking to renovate the room and just up the, up the spec of each room. That's great. Cool. Okay, I'll make sure the links are in the uh, description so people can find you easy enough. So um, that's it. That's it for me. So thank you so much for coming on and I'll uh, see you again. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Cheers. Thank you. So that's it. The interview with Ollie Griffiths. Who knows how he has the energy to go off and do all that work after his training sessions, but he manages it. Um, head over to his Instagram as well. Some of the projects he's been working on, like the police house, looks really cool. Um, but anyway, that's it from me this week. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, please like and subscribe as always. So that's it from me this week. I hope you enjoyed the show and I'll see you again next time. Thank you so much for listening to my podcast and I really hope you enjoyed it. If you have, please leave me a five-star review to help other people find it and don't forget to hit that subscribe button.